And we'd like to welcome you to, you know, to our uh, event tonight. My name is Ken Hickman. I am the director of the museum. Uh, can, can I get a show of hands? How many folks have been here before? All right, that's actually pretty good. That's about better than I was expecting. You know, for those of you who haven't been here before, uh, the, uh, we are in our 12th year of operation here at the museum. And we are a fairly rare you know, type of institution, particularly within the Big Ten. There's only one other facility in the conference you know, that is like ours, and that's out at Iowa. Uh, you know, as you may have seen as, as you walk through, we do have separate exhibit areas here for each one of our 31 varsity sports. Uh, we also have exhibits on three sports that are no longer you know, varsity here at Penn State. And I'll leave it, up, leave it up to you to find out which ones those are as, kind of as you wander through you know, uh, tonight and in the future. Uh, we also have a variety of changing exhibits you know, that we do you know, through the course of the year. Um, we have uh, one upstairs right now that focuses on a very big anniversary we're celebrating here at Penn State Athletics this year. Now, does anyone here know what that is? What is this the anniversary of this school year? Way in the back. It's the 50th anniversary of varsity women's sports. Excellent. It's the 50th anniversary of varsity athletics for women here at Penn State. You know, and, you know, it's you know, certainly a, a big accomplishment and, and a, a big celebration you know, you know, for the university and for our department. You know, you know, as most of you may know, you know, we were way, way in advance of Title IX in bringing varsity sports to women. You know, you know, into fruition you know, at the Division I level. Uh, it certainly continues a long-standing tradition of being a pioneer in inclusiveness you know, here at Penn State. You know, we were also on the forefront of racial integration in the decades previous. You know, so we're, we're certainly looking forward to having an, an exciting year's worth of programming centered around the Women's 50th. You know, we will be having a number of events the weekend after next. Just uh, the weekend of the UMass football game, and you know, we'll be having a number of our women's alumni back, so you know, that should be a good time. We'll have them recognized at halftime of the football game as well. Uh -huh. you know, here at the museum, we also do a variety of programming through the year. You know, we do events you know, such as tonight. Uh, we also do a, a, several types of tours here at Beaver Stadium. We do a regular stadium tour, and we'll be doing that again on Parents Weekend in October. So if, you know, if you'd like to see the locker room, if you'd like to see the Letterman's Club, you know, go upstairs to the uh, Mount Nittany Club. You know, you know, keep an eye on our website. We'll have the information for that coming up shortly. Uh, we also do other programming, such as our Blue Bus Experience, which allows folks you know, to see behind the scenes down at Lash, as well as here at, here at the stadium, as well as to you know, ride the blue football buses. You know, that's been inc incredibly popular, and certainly I think folks have enjoyed it. Uh, we do a variety of community programming as well. You know, we're getting ready for our big Halloween event next month. You know, we'll bring about a thousand community kids you know, through the galleries here where they'll you know, meet varsity athletes from each one of our varsity sports. You know, it's kind of a, a nice community event. You know, allow, you know, it's usually two weeks before Halloween, so it's a great time for kids to kind of shake down their Halloween costume and you know, see if that's exactly what they want to be, be in a given year. Yeah, and we'll also be having a variety of speaker panels you know, th you know, throughout this year, you know, uh, many of which will center on the fi women's 50th anniversary. So it ought to be, be a great year here at the museum. Um, in addition, we are a, a resource for students here at Penn State. Uh, between our collections and what is held by the sports archives at Paterno Library, you know, we are the repository for the bulk of Penn State's athletic heritage. Uh, so folks who are doing research papers, who are doing background on stories, we are a great resource for folks to come and check out. Uh, you know, I'll be around you know, for a while tonight. If anyone has any questions, feel free to grab me. And with that, let me turn things over for our program tonight. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Steve Samson from the College of Communications. I appreciate you all making the effort to come out here. I've been lucky enough to be in this room working before. I can tell you that there's been, there have been fun and exciting times for me there. I think this is a very important night for you, an opportunity to appreciate the community that's in the Center for Sports Journalism, the depth and breadth of what exists in this community, and the expertise and talent that's here from student organizations to Penn State Athletics to downtown news media organizations. So I'm going to do a couple panels here for an hour or so. I'm going to go upstairs and do some roundtable sessions. Make sure you participate, ask questions. It's my job just kind of to direct traffic. 
Um, and I think we're going to have a great time. So we're going to start with the college communications folks first. Coming up will be John Affleck, the director of the, uh, the Curley Center in Sports Journalism. He's our night chair. And Bob Martin, our assistant, assistant dean for internships and career services. They're going to talk a little bit about what they do, about getting involved in the Curley Center, and internships in general with the college on campus and off. So I'll turn it over to them. John, you can go first. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Oh, wait, tonight. I forgot. I, I, and this wasn't on purpose. Okay. Um, <laughs> the thing about Penn State is it's, it's a great place to be because there's good people and they take care of their own. So I have Heather McDevitt's book up here. Heather, we're the kind of place that takes care of you. So if you want to come up and get it at some point, there you go. <laughs> now we can start. Okay. So I feel like I should be talking about Rutgers, but um, I won't. Um, let me just... Uh, I'm really glad, first of all, to, to, uh, to be at the Sports Museum tonight. I really want to thank everybody uh, involved for setting this up, uh, especially Steve and Mike Poorman and Mike Essie, um, who put so much work into it. And um, uh, I, I want to tell, take a couple of minutes and just tell you a little bit about the Curley Center uh, historically and what we do. And then I'm going to take you through real quick uh, and we could talk about it more uh, over dinner as, as, we, as we go about applying to the Curley Center. So um, first of all, this is our 11th year uh, with the Curley Center. Uh, it was one of the first programs devoted to sports journalism in the country. And uh, it was really the brainchild of, of John Curley, uh, the first editor of USA Today, and Doug Anderson, our former dean, um, the second director. Uh, our, uh, my predecessor was Malcolm Moran. And uh, I came on board uh, last year, and so uh, pretty much have my feet on the ground at this point and know a lot of you. And what we do at the Curley Center is uh, sort of a combination of things, all devoted to sports journalism and creating uh, opportunities for our students that they wouldn't get normally just through the regular run-of-the-mill uh, journalism courses. First of all, we do off-campus um, off campus events and off-campus uh, opportunities. Um, you may have heard about one of our more ambitious projects, which we just got back from. It was a course uh, in which eight students uh, are in the process of earning three credits for a trip to Ireland uh, in which we covered uh, the Croke Park Classic and um, all, of our, all of our content, uh, our text, our photos, our videos, and an infographic that we did uh, were given to the members of the Pennsylvania News Media Association. And if you don't know what that is, that's essentially all of the newspapers in Pennsylvania have an industry group. And so all of our copy went to them. Um, at last count, we were at 18 of them had, had, uh, had published our work and were, uh, were still looking at um, uh, at the count, so I think that's going to increase over time. But that's a that's a great experience, and and some of the people who participated in that are, are here tonight. If you're if you're an underclassman and you want to talk to people like Jake Somerville, um, they can tell you what it w tell you what it was like. We also go off campus for uh, conferences. Um, the uh, students joined me at the Associated Press Sports Editors Conference last summer in Washington. Um, I have, uh, we have a group of young women here from the Association of Women in Sports Media. They, we went to Orlando in the summer for an industry conference there, so there's a lot to get, to get involved in there. On campus, we're interested in a, in a couple of ways of enhancing students' experience in sports journalism. Uh, one is through speakers. Um, I think it was today. Uh, we, we put out the, uh, the list of speakers coming up uh, this, this semester. We're going to have uh, a mix, as we often do, of um, sort of big names in the, in the business. Uh, Doc Emmerich is uh, going to try to join us uh, a little bit later in the semester. We're getting him nailed down on his dates. Um, we'll have uh, the movers and shakers behind the anti-Redskins nickname campaign. Uh, that's a hot button issue. And they're going to be here along with, um, along with Mike Wise from uh, the Washington Post. And um, so uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have those guys. We'll have, we'll have other speakers uh, throughout the semester. So keep an eye on the site and, and, and 
uh, check in with us and we'll, we'll tell you all about that. So um, we also do workshops. Last, last year we did uh, the investigative reporters and editors came and, and talked specifically about how to get the big story, but how to do it in sports. And we're contemplating other workshops that we'll be, uh, we'll be doing this year um, on the table are things like multimedia, photo, uh, going beyond texts, uh, because we know that uh, people have a pretty broad range of interests here. So that's really what the Curley Center does. I'll, I'll start with a little bit on the application process and then turn it over to you, Jamie. Um, Dean Perry. Um, and uh, the least you need to know is essentially the there is, there is an application process. Um, the applications are going to be made available September 15th, so next week it's coming up. And to get a Curley Center certificate, um, you need to take a couple of courses in the sports, uh, sports media fields, uh, sports, sports writing, sports broadcast, sports information, uh, one of the, uh, two of those three. And then there's also um, a work experience on campus, and that's a little bit about what tonight is about, about introducing you to some of the opportunities there are to get experiences that qualify for that certificate. What does a certificate do? It tells an employer, I have a particular interest in this, and you will develop relationships with faculty, with people in town um, who can vouch for you as you move ahead in your career and um, get, into your, get into your first jobs out of school. And it also just sort of creates a connection, creates a network, and we want to help each other as the Curley Center grows, as time goes on, and, and, and we can help our fellow Penn Staters. It's a way to, way to make a connection within the community of, of Penn Staters. So, Jamie, you want to talk a little bit about uh, how to apply? And this is Jamie Perry, our Assistant Dean for Academic Services. So, good evening, everyone, and uh, glad you have an interest in the John Curley Center. Uh, the application process is relatively straightforward, and since the, its inception in 2003, it's really meant to be an inclusive application process rather than exclusive. If you have a uh, passion for sports and really the ability to write, no matter if you want to be a media relations person or a broadcaster or in a traditional print or written form, if you can write well and you have a passion for sports, you're probably going to have a successful application. And yeah, that will be available online. You'll be downloading the application and including all the different parts of the application um, that we ask for you to include. And those of you going for broadcast, you want, may want to include a clip um, or a demo. And John, do you have a preference on what media mechanism they turn in their electronic? Um, not particularly, as long as it's not a disc. Okay. Not a disc. Not a disc. We'll put that on the application to make sure they know that. And uh, once that application is available on September 15th, it's really a rolling process. And uh, we will have an eventual deadline because we eventually need to sequence the courses out to make sure each of you get what you need or want to take in a Curley Center and graduate on time. So that's very important. Any seniors out here, or juniors, I'm sorry. Okay, how about any seniors? Okay, a few seniors. Seniors, we'd love for you to get that application within a week because uh, it's not too late for you to wrap this up and get the two courses that you'll need and your media experience. And if you want to graduate in the spring, uh, we're going to give you priority over lower classmen in terms of standing to make sure you get those courses. So getting the application in sooner, uh, the better. Uh, freshmen and sophomore students, you can certainly apply. And if you do not have COM 260W completed, don't panic. We can accept you on a contingency basis, almost as an associate member. And then once that course is completed, you'll then move into the full status as a John Curley Center. But your acceptance in the John Curley Center then gives you the privileges of what we do for the students through the programming and um, information sessions and special events. And that's really a nice bonus for you uh, underclassmen because you get involved right away and get four years of it. And uh, we encourage you to do that. Uh, no other information on the applications. The only side note I would make is that when you do complete the application, we do want to know your preferences for what you want to kind of focus in. Some of you want to do media relations. Some of you want to do the broadcasting. Uh, some of you want to write. We want to know that's your preference, because ideally, 
we want to get you that special course, that one you want um, as your top priority, done by the end of your junior year because we're anticipating you doing a sports media internship somewhere after your junior year and why not have the best skills ready to move forward so completely you on an intern is really what we want to happen and our, our office will handle that component for you. So I think that's it for the application process. Okay, so we've told you about it, we've told you how to apply, and then once you're in and you do your classes, you're going to get internships, and Bob Martin's going to handle that, and I know he can't probably, well, I don't know, maybe he can run a four-minute mile, but I bet you he can do internships overview in four or five minutes, maybe. Four hours? <laughs> like okay. minutes. Like All minutes. Right. Yeah, these guys know I can go off on this, uh, so I'll try and keep my comments brief, but uh, some of you know me already. You get those career advisor emails, right? Raise your hand if you're getting those. Thank you very much. Take a lot of pride in those. Sometimes five, sometimes ten a day, right? Yeah, and uh, we, we certainly do take a lot of pride in you getting those. We, we are one of the colleges that hand delivers opportunity to you. And you can be on your way to class, reading them on your smartphone. We think that's pretty critical. Uh, time is of the essence. We want you to apply to those opportunities immediately. We're in a great place. Uh, the State College University Park has a wealth of, as you're going to learn tonight from some of the uh, other speakers that are here, a wealth of opportunity in sports right here on campus, off campus, and you want to take advantage of those opportunities. They're a great foundation to move you out into a, a larger market or maybe you really, this is where you want to be. And uh, this is uh, the, the, the chance to, to grow as a, a professional uh, in the sports arena, as Jamie said, in the in the, uh, the sports information world, the broadcasting or the print spectrum or the online spectrum, that we, we've got a variety of opportunities uh, available to you. And uh, if, if we don't send them out as an email listserv, that doesn't mean that they're not available, okay? I always say that that, that was just a, a response that a, a, an internship site asked us to actually send out immediately. And uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't other opportunities. We have a database of over 3,500 places. So you want to certainly come and visit us, and we can give you uh, a good spectrum of places, not just here in State College, but other opportunities. And uh, you all know we preach that three-prong approach. We really believe that's what makes our students special, and makes them marketable and well-prepared, doing well academically, take advantage of those on-campus experiences like PSN TV, uh, the Daily Collegian Com Radio. These are critical avenues that really get you the foundation to move on to those internships. And uh, that next internship might be right here in State College, and we can help you get there. Cool, thank you. Um, you'll have more time for each of these guys at the round tables afterwards, so we're gonna switch from this group to the next group of panelists Great. And, and keep things moving along. Thank you guys very much. Stop by and say hi uh, later, and uh, reintroduce yourself if you uh, if we don't know yet. Great. So we broke it down as you can see in the panel. We're going to have some student organizations coming up now. We have kind of back and forth. We have Mike Essie from Com Radio, Megan Flood from from Awesome, Mike Gilbert from PSN TV, and Evan Romano from the Daily Collegian. So once they get seated, we'll start at my far left. So it looks like Evan's going to get to go first and talk a little bit about themselves how they got to what they're doing now, and what their opportunities are that exist for students, where they're at. All right, hey guys. Uh... Yeah, stay back, see what happens. Okay. My name's Evan Romano. I'm a uh, senior in the College of Communications. I'm a member of the John Curley Center. Um, so I'm the sports chief for the Daily Collegian, which is the student newspaper here at Penn State. Um, what I do is just edit the sports section, essentially. Um, the best way to get involved with the Daily Collegian is at the start of every semester, we have a uh, open tryout where you'll have to take a written test and then go through a brief interview. And it's, it's uh, very easy going and laid back. So there's that. Um, what we do is we're essentially a fully student-run and operated newspaper, and we publish five issues a day, or five issues a week with uh, Monday through Friday edition and you'll see them all around campus they're in a bunch of classrooms uh, around campus there's some downtown and we also post all our stories online and on Twitter and on Facebook and there's an Instagram I think that we're gonna get going as well uh, in, in terms of sports we cover every single varsity sport at Penn State 
I've in the past covered uh, men's hockey, baseball, and track and field. Um, but the Collegian covers every sport from football all the way to field hockey to women's tennis to women's golf, everything. Um, and it's really, for me, for journalism, the, it's really the closest thing you're going to get to working at a newspaper, like a, a newspaper as a student, uh, because you do get to write, you get that experience writing, you get that experience reporting on a deadline, and it's pretty much, you can write a late log, and you're going to be on that real deadline, because we have to reach the 12 o'clock deadline every single night. So, that's all for me. All right, how's everyone doing? Uh, my name is Mike Gilbert. I'm a sophomore broadcast journalism major. Um, I am an executive producer of Penn State Sports Night, along with Maddie Shutt, who's in the back. We're co-executive producers. Um, we, Penn State Sports Night is under the PSN TV umbrella. So PSN TV stands for Penn State Network Television, uh, a completely student-run television network that gets broadcasted onto the uh, campus channel, so you can watch it all over um, State College. We also use YouTube and Ustream, so most of the shows go on the internet as well. Um, sports, Penn State Sports Night. We air, well actually before I do that, one more thing on PSN TV. There's 12 shows this semester for PSN TV. Um, sports, news, um, pretty much anything that you're interested in, comedy, um, pretty much anything that you're interested in, there's a show for you to get involved in. Um, so for sports, we air every other Monday. Um, that's at 7.30 in Innovation Park. And what our show is, is it's a round table sports discussion. So there's four of us um, at a table talking about Penn State sports, uh, professional sports. And we have um, students go out into the field, cover uh, sporting events. You get to go on the field for those. Um, do a little stand-in. Hi, my name is Mike Gilbert. I'm here at Beaver Stadium. Penn State defeats Akron 21-3. Um, make a highlight package. Um, those go on the show as well as PSN News. So those packages go on both shows. Um, plenty of work for everyone to do. Um, it's uh, specifically good experience if you're interested in sports journalism, television production, and reporting. Um, we also need a film crew, people to work the back room um, during the show, during the broadcast. And um, yeah, so obviously the more uh, we see your face, the more involved you are, um, the more experience you're going to get, the more opportunities you're going to get. And um, so yeah, it's definitely something um, that's good if you're into sports journalism, television production. If you have any questions, I mean, I know we're having the um, open table discussion. You could email me at myg5257 or Maddie. It's mcs5554, and those are both at PSU. So, Megan. Thanks, Mike. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Megan Flood. I'm a senior, unfortunately, broadcast journalism. I'm the president of the Association for Women in Sports Media here at Penn State. Uh, the Association for Women in Sports Media is a national organization. Um, it works on networking and being a service, um, kind of a support for women who want to go into sports media, PR, advertising, team event sales, team management, um, broadcast journalism, print journalism, kind of anything you can find. Um, some highlights that the national organization does. They have a very extensive and your $25 student fee is kind of worth just this extensive internship and job email that you get weekly. Um, it's basically everything you can possibly want in the sports media world. And then they also run a national convention, which we were fortunate enough, as John said, to have a group go to Orlando this past May. Um, over Memorial Day weekend, we got to go play with the mouse and Disney and everything. We had eight girls go, um, so it was a really exciting time. There are now, um, I believe Awesome has 13 student chapters around the country. Um, we made a joke there was a solid Big Ten appearance um, between Maryland, uh, Michigan, and a couple other Big Ten schools there. So we were the big representatives of the Big Ten. Um, we had the most people. But what we can do here for you on campus, um, we're networking. We are internship and scholarship opportunities. So Awesome National runs its own scholarship opportunities. So we help you um, know how to apply for that and kind of work on that. We also do um, career resume and um, cover letter workshops. One of our meetings this upcoming year, or upcoming semester, is a mock interview meeting. We also do a mentor program. Um, so for your younger folks, you get paired with an older member, one who's gone to the conference. Um, 
and based on what you're interested in, what you want to get involved in in the sports media world, we're rolling that out this year. So that's something we're very excited about. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email me at mkf5100 at psu.edu. Cool. All right, guys. My name is Mike Assey. I'm a senior broadcast journalism major, one of two student general managers of Com Radio. Um, Andy Medor, who is the sports director of Com Radio, is in the back as well, so you guys can talk to he and I when we break out uh, for the roundtable discussion. So, what Com Radio is? We're the student-run radio station, um, backed by the College of Communications out at Innovation Park, um, a little ways off the campus, past Mountain Indian Medical Center. Um, what we do is we have a daily newscast that is news, entertainment, fashion, sports related. That runs at 6 o'clock every day. We also do a shortened version at 5 o'clock. Um, we're web stream based, so any of that is over the web, also on the TuneIn radio app, and also on campus TV. So there's three ways that anyone could listen pretty much from anywhere. Um, outside of that, we also have a sports department, which is fairly large and fairly the biggest thing that drives what we do at Com Radio. And through that, we've had a lot of success um, with the events that we do and cover and getting internships and things like that. So I'll kind of de debrief you guys on what we have um, in that regard. We do all home and road football games for Penn State football, live play-by-play -play broadcast. We were in Ireland for the opener, thanks to the Curley Center for backing us on that as well. We were able to go there, um, myself and Joe Garofolo, who's also a senior. We called that game. We also called a high school football game between Cedar Cliff and Penn Manor. And we also did stuff for the Center County Report, which Joe and I are in, and I'll get to how that plays in, Com Radio plays into that uh, in a little bit. Um, we also do about 15 Penn State sports, home, home games and matches, men's soccer, women's soccer, women's volleyball, hockey, basketball, baseball, softball, lacrosse, um, wrestling, all that stuff. We are also starting to go um, on the road with a couple sports teams like men's volleyball. We're in the works of doing that. Um, and coaches are also kind of coming to us and we're able to work with them to learn more about the sports that aren't as mainstream. So we're able to cover those. So there's a lot of interaction between everyone in the community with Com Radio, um, which is pretty cool in its sports department. We also have talk shows that are sports related. So you could have your own talk show talking about the NBA, talking about if you're a Baltimore Orioles fan or what, whatever it is, um, sports related. Megan has a talk show that focuses solely on women's, uh, women's sports and Olympics and things like that. So there's a wide variety of things you could do. We also have event specific shows and our biggest one is the NFL Draft. We are the only college in college radio station in all of the country to broadcast live all seven rounds of the NFL Draft. We were just there at Radio City Music Hall this past year, did all seven rounds. Fordham is there as well for the first round, but they leave after day one. We stay, which allows us to have that uh, kind of title, if you will. Um, we also do stuff for Selection Sunday. We have a live Selection Su Sunday show. Two years ago when Selection Sunday was an over spring break, we had a audio interview from either a player, coach, or media member that covers all 68 teams in the NCAA tournament. We were the only one that had such audio uh, presence online, so that was pretty cool um, as well. We also have a PR, social media side of things. We have someone who runs our Twitter handle. We also have a sales uh, division as well that do our on-air advertising and things like that. The one myth about Com Radio is that the only thing you can get out of it is radio. That's just a huge myth. I mean, you can get writing opportunities and you can get internship opportunities that are not related to radio. This past summer, Megan was at CBS2 in New York. I was with Major League Baseball doing advanced media. We had a kid at MLB Network, CBS Sports Radio, the FCC, CNBC. So we had a wide variety of radio, business, uh, TV, multimedia internships that people had. And also the Center County Report, which is a class you can get into through the College of Communications. The majority of the anchors that were picked through an audition process were from Com Radio. So you don't really need to have, that also had involvement in PSN TV and things like that too. But you don't really need to have just TV background again and stuff like that. The radio side of things, and that's the way it's set up through the college communications. You take 260, 360, 465, so print, radio, TV for a purpose. So we'd like to think Com Radio is kind of a bridge um, that way as, as well. We kind of like the collegian have a, you know, training and kind of like a tryout, not necessarily a tryout, but you, we see what you have and then we feed you through in the respective ways. Anyone's welcome, no one gets turned away. Um, when you come out, it is too late for the fall. You can get involved in the spring, we can talk to you about that 
um, up top when we go upstairs for the roundtable discussion. And I would just say one thing um, on behalf of the Curley Center, just to kind of tell you guys about that. I'm a Curley Center student as a senior, and I've done wide ranges of stuff that just were blown away any expe expectation I had when I came in. So you're surrounded by good people. There are great opportunities here. Um, one thing I did forget, I also work in Penn State Athletics doing gopsusports.com stuff. So it's a wide variety of stuff you can get out of this. And I've completed, because of the Curley Center, a print, radio, and TV multimedia internship, which is kind of the goal of it. So it's definitely, you have the resources around you and the people around you to get you where you need to be. So if you have any questions, Andy and I will be up top and I'm looking forward to talking to all of you. Before I kick you guys off, can you, I, we have three seniors and a sophomore. Can you please tell me, tell them what your first sports related experience was on campus? For me, my uh, first experience uh, sports related was actually with the Collegian covering as a, like the first semester is sort of a tryout like Mike alluded to and my first experience was actually calling up a uh, former Olympic athlete for the Collegian just because in, during that tryout period you sort of get whatever, whatever stories pop up and uh, this Olympic wrestler was holding a camp and I called him up and did a story and it got right in the paper the, uh, the next day and that was a uh, really interesting experience as a, as a sophomore for me. Yeah, for me it was actually with Com Radio, and uh, what Mike does, he does a really good job of including everyone. Um, you know, as soon as they join new members, so they invited me to uh, check out the Bill O'Brien press conference uh, last year. So that was my first experience. And I also wanted to mention one more thing. I know it's also kind of a, a myth that uh, you can't do Com Radio and PSN TV at the same time. I know me and Mike were talking about that before. Uh, it's I'm I'm in both. I know a lot of kids that do both, so it's definitely um, a doable thing. Uh, so mine also was with Com Radio. I got involved. I was the executive producer of Penn State Sports Night last year, um, and I got involved with that my freshman year as well, but I got instantly involved with Com Radio. Um, so actually the first home football game I ever experienced as a Penn State student, I was on what we have as our tailgate show, um, which I'm on staff again this year, and I think it's one of the greatest things we do. Um, we're right outside uh, Beaver Stadium for game day. It's kind of like a game day production just on the radio, um, and I got to be one of the people, a panelist, my freshman year, um, first game. So it was a really exciting time for me. Yeah, my third day of college, I did a live play-by-play -play of Penn State versus Northwestern women's volleyball. Not only had I never done play-by-play -play before, I've never watched a women's volleyball match, I've never played volleyball or anything like that, and now women's volleyball is one of the sports I do the most uh, three years later. So you try things and you'll learn from your mistakes, you'll get better. I can tell you that broadcast I did was terrible. It was ridiculously awful. I've saved it just to laugh when I need a laugh or so something like that. But it, you learn by, by kind of not succeeding as well. And I think one more thing, the biggest thing you'll learn through the college and hopefully internships experience, which I think personally is the biggest thing you'll get out of this, is you'll learn what you don't want to do. I know it sounds weird, but I've learned things that I thought, hey, this is going to be really cool. And then I've done it. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And that's good to learn now when you're in college, not when you're searching for a job. And I think the wide variety of the things you can get here allows you to do that, so. Thank you guys, we're gonna keep moving. We're going to our next group. We have Steve Bauer from statecollege.com, Tim Gilbert from Longwood State, and Bob Taylor from ESPN Radio. I think probably the, one of the overarching messages you'll hear from folks Maybe you won't until they get finished, but Mike and our students just did it really well, and it's one of the reasons I like my job, being able to teach, being able to promote our students, is it comes down to you wanting to go after some stuff and being aggressive and, and taking chances, and, and these opportunities exist here. And we also have Brian Tripp with us from ESPN Radio down on, left, on your right-hand side, my left. Um, let's start with Tim, kind of going down the aisle, talk about what you guys do and how they can maybe get involved. Wait. Sure. Um, can you guys hear me? Great. All right, so my name is Tim Gilbert. I'm a senior from Philadelphia in the College of Communications, uh, also majoring in criminology. A uh, little, bit, little bit of background about me first. I um, kind of kind of worn a lot of hats in my career in the media here. I started off with the Collegian, actually, uh, when I did Leap. So I was there pretty much from day one. Uh, I was there for a year, or I was there for two years, but uh, during that I also did an internship with Philadelphia Daily News where I covered the football team. And then I went over to Onward State, uh, and now I'm the managing editor of Onward State. Um, so a little bit about Onward. We're 
kind of a very unique media organization here in a couple of ways. First off, we're a student organization. We're you know ent entirely student managed. All of our editorial con editorial content is done by students, um, but we're not. In, in any way affiliated with Penn State or the College of Communications. Um, so we're all independently run, completely independent, but we all at the same time are all students. Um, so that's kind of cool. You know, we don't have any, any sort of, I don't know, loyalty to the college, but at the same time, a lot of our alums do go out and get really, really good jobs. Um, Currently, one of our alums is the, New York, is the uh, social media manager for the New York Daily News, which has, I think, like three million followers or something. We've got people all over the country in PR jobs, things like that. So, I think the biggest myth about Onward is that uh, you know our alums don't, or I'm sorry, it's you know it's, it's not a outlet to go out and get good jobs. It certainly is. A little bit about what we do. Um, we kind of have a style and substance that a lot of outlets don't have. We kind of reject having a view from nowhere, I guess you might say. Like, you know, we kind of look at, I don't know, certain things of journalism as a little bit uh, in the past, I guess. You know, we kind of have a little bit of a Penn State slant with our reporting. Um, you know, which we're totally fine with. Uh, you know, we we don't think it's wrong to you know report on things you know, from a not rah rah Penn State perspective, but certainly from a perspective of a Penn State student. You know, so for instance, when the football team uh, wins a game last second, you know, we'll tweet you know ficken in all caps and like exclamation points and be really excited about it because you know the people we report to are excited about that, and uh, we like to say that you know. We're not about the community, we're of the community. You know, we're something that is part of the community, so we're reporting what goes on here, um, th I guess, through that, uh, through that lens. Um, some of the stuff we report on is also, uh, you know, we report on all sorts of things. We have features, we have news, you know, uh, just like the Collegian, we have all sorts of news from, you know, board trustees coverage to, you know, covering whatever went on last night, things like that. Um, but also we have some more featurey things, some things that I guess you won't really see anywhere else. Like uh, a couple weeks ago, we sent a reporter out to uh, the Goodwill in State College and took pictures of some weird things in the Goodwill and had little funny comments about it and that posted pretty well. So people like reading that sort of stuff too. Um, so that goes back to you know, the, our community angle. We also have, you know, we take pride in our opinion pieces, uh, kind of keeping a pulse on the finger of the, keep, I'm sorry, keeping a finger on the pulse of the Penn State community is what we really like to do. You know, really make sure that, you know, people, we, we're, we're a way to drive conversation, if you will. Um, now for this semester, tryouts, uh, kind of like the Com Radio uh, actually already ended. Um, they went on the last two weeks. Uh, that said, you know, if you guys do have a serious interest in joining, you can definitely email me. We can see what we can do. Um, We've got fluent staff, or staff somewhere around you know 40 to 45 people most of the time. Um, you know, we're not. I know all you guys are comm majors, I guess, but not all comm majors are on Armour State. We have people from all over uh, different colleges, Penn State. So you don't have to be a comm major. You know, uh, and if you don't want to write, you know, hard hitting news, you don't have to do that at all. You know, we have a lot of people that just write featurey kind of things for us. Um, so yeah, um, if you guys want to talk to me later about it, please please do. Steve. I'm Steve Bauer. I'm the managing editor of statecollege.com. You're a good looking bunch of people. What we do is really a privilege. You know, most people have to work really hard. What we do is fun. And I hope you agree with that because it's really a big essential part of what journalism is about. A uh, little background on statecollege.com. We're a local operation. We're digital online. Uh, we cover news, sports, anything that's going on. We're a relatively small staff, but uh, uh, that kind of makes us all uh, jack of all trades. Everybody gets a chance to do everything. Sometimes our sports people write news. Uh, you'll find that happens in a lot of uh, a lot of markets. I'm not a sports guy myself. Uh, I'm uh, primarily a, uh, uh, a news guy. Uh, I spent most of my career in New York and uh, Philadelphia working as a writer and, and a news producer. But uh, uh, sports has always been a, a big part of uh, uh, any news operation, and uh, certainly in this market, uh, people are uh, very excited about uh, uh, Penn State in particular. Uh, we tend to be very selective in the people that we take. Uh, some, if you go to a network uh, show, they might have 20 interns. 
And that's great. And you'll get to see how, uh, how the operation works. Uh, they're going to put you behind a desk answering a phone for a week. If you're lucky, you might get, uh, get to go out for a few days and tag along with a reporter and see how a reporter does it. That's not what we do. We, uh, the interns that we take have already demonstrated an ability to do the job. And we essentially put them to work, put them out there on the street. And it's a really valuable experience, uh, an opportunity uh, to work in a professional setting and uh, uh, work with professionals who've been, uh, been in the trenches, who can help you develop. And I want to say congratulations. Uh, the fact that you're here, I'm, I'm really impressed with this big turnout. You know, it shows that you're serious. Uh, I don't want to speak out of school. But I, I guess I should say I'm a Penn State grad. Uh, I majored in beer drinking. <laughs> and, and I'm just really impressed uh, with the quality of the writing that I see uh, from students. Uh, I, I'm just floored over and over again. Uh, and it's really important that you take advantage of every opportunity you have. I know I sound a little preachy. Uh, but they did tell me that uh, uh, this would be an opportunity to, for me to offer some advice, and I'm going to take advantage of it. I got a list of B's here, and it's what I want each and every one of you to be. I want you to be prepared. Uh, take every course you can uh, you can think of. Take every opportunity you can to uh, uh, to get better, to uh, uh, achieve, to 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 practice the craft. Be versatile. I don't want people that say, well, gee, I've never done that before. I want people to say, sure, I can do that. Why not? What's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, be aggressive. Get out there. Get it done. And you know, again, that's what I see out of uh, so many Penn State uh, uh, students. Uh, they're working for Onward State or the Collegian and, and uh, uh, the people that have spoken al already. Uh, do you notice how poised they are? Be poised. Practice in front of a mirror if you want to be on Sports Center. Uh, learn, learn how to uh, present yourself. Be creative. You can never, you can never be too creative. I always tell uh, all of my writers, uh, I don't care how off the wall you write, uh, I can tone it down. But if you uh, if you give me vanilla, I can't make it tutti frutti. You know, you gotta give it to me. Do something different. No, don't, don't do it like everybody else. Be persistent. It's a tough business. I mean, look, look at all these people. And you know, there's a lot of talent in this room. And you're going to be competing for jobs. Uh, you've got, don't take no for an answer. Uh, you want to work in New York? I suggest you go to New York. I know a lot of people that have started there. You don't have to start in a small market if that's not what you want to do. You know, why not me? I mean, ask yourself that. Why not? You're talented. You can do this. Be professional. Be presentable. Look the part. Why not? Be humble. Be willing to learn. Take advice. Look at people that, that you admire. Follow their example. Be on time. I know you've heard that before. I cannot overstate how important it is if, uh, uh, if an event starts at 11, be there 10 minutes before, if not sooner. <laughs> and show up. 90% of the job is being there. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a story and found a story that I wasn't prepared to cover. In many cases, a better story than I thought I was going to get. But you know, if you sit at your desk, and say, gee, uh, maybe if I make some phone calls and they call me back, uh, I might get a story. Get out there. Do it. It goes back to being aggressive. Uh, now this one I've, uh, I've already uh, I screwed up for you. Be brief. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Steve. I'm Bob Taylor, I'm the program director of uh, 
ESPN Radio 1450. That's just one of six stations we have at the Forever Broadcasting Complex here in State College. Um, our sports programming is spread out between those six stations. So uh, if you would uh, intern with us, help us, work with us, uh, you're going to be working in a multi-station cluster. And that's pretty important in radio these days. Uh, it's pretty rare that you're going to go anywhere and work for an individual station. So um, if you're in our facility, uh, you'll learn to uh, work with different stations, not only sports. And I kind of uh, tell everyone that to make sure you have a backup plan in addition to sports. Um, we work hand in hand with Learfield Sports, who does the production of Penn State football, basketball, and hockey, men's and women's basketball. Uh, we work hand in hand with them, and we're their flagship station for this market. Also, uh, we air Penn State baseball, wrestling, softball. Am I missing anything else? In conjunction with uh, athletics, and directly handle the production of those sports. Uh, put them on the air and provide the audio for gopsusports.com. Uh, we have two talk shows, two local talk shows that originate from our facility here in State College and our facility in Altoona. Uh, Brian will talk more about those in a few minutes. Um, as far as internships, we're always looking for interns. Um, I won't go through what exactly you'll do. Uh, that's usually in the postings. But I know that if you come in to do an internship with us, uh, you'll probably be brought in to do specific tasks. Uh, but we tell everyone, uh, you get out of the internship what you put into it. If you want to do more with us and you see that there's something that we do that you want to be involved in, uh, once you get into an internship with us, you let us know. You can become as involved as you want to be in our production. Um, we have some people that just started already that are on the air. Uh, doing things with us on the air and uh, helping with our production on game day Saturday. So we'll get you pretty involved. So uh, I have uh, cards with me and uh, look forward to speaking with many of you upstairs at the round table. Uh, Brian will talk more about uh, some of our local talk shows that we do, how you can be involved with those. And uh, he's also a play-by-play -play announcer and tell you about what some of he does uh, for that. Cool. All right, well, I was sitting in a seat like you guys about five or six years ago. I, I graduated from Penn State in the Curley Center in 2011, and State College is awesome, so I never left. There are times when you get older, you start to hate it some days, but fortunately, you work with some pretty awesome people in this town, and there are a lot of great opportunities for people not only still in school, but right when you get out of school in State College. It's a small market, so you have to be prepared to do absolutely anything. And that's kind of what my role is at ESPN Radio and at Forever Broadcasting. So I'll handle news updates and sports updates and record those at 11 o'clock at night. And they air during the day. And then I'll go back in at noon. And I host a talk show with Steve Jones in the afternoon. So Steve is the play-by-play -play voice of Penn State football. Uh, I'm sure most people probably know that if they follow Penn State. And it, it's different sitting up here after covering press conferences once in a while to be sitting up here and looking out there. And not to have Steve say, turn off your cell phone when you come into the room. That's usually what Jeff handles so when you come to a press conference. Uh, about our talk shows at ESPN Radio, uh, our focus is local sports. You can turn on ESPN any time of the day and get the story of Ray Rice. But you can't turn on ESPN any time of the day and get the story of Penn State and then get the story of State College High School football or Altoona High School football or here one of the Steelers beat writers. So we try to get a local fo focus to our talk shows. So one of the important things you'll learn during the course of not only being a student but during your career is having an understanding of the market that you're in. Myself, I'd rather sit there and talk about the Phillies every day. But up here, we're talking about the Pirates almost every day. So you have to be sure that you're willing to learn, adapt, and handle anything that's thrown at you. And that includes any role at the station, whether it's production, picking up a board op late at night, doing the Sunday morning church shift. Whenever you're available, they might need you, because you'll have to fill all roles, especially in a small market. 
So I think that's why when you're going through college, some of the advice that you heard earlier from some of your classmates and some of the other people that are speaking here today, you have to take on any role. So I was a part of Com Radio when I was a student and I did production, I did writing, we did blogging. Yeah, anything you can do can help you in your career. So you never know what's going to be thrown your way. Even though right now I work at ESPN Radio, that's a part-time job. I work part-time doing public relations for a nonprofit in town. And then I also do Penn State hockey games, which is ultimately my career goal. So to get to where you want to be, sometimes you have to do some things maybe you don't like as much or you didn't envision yourself doing. I never envisioned myself running a golf tournament for a wildlife foundation. But that's what I'll do during the summer so I can do play-by-play -play hockey during the fall, winter, and into the spring before I hang out with uh, Lauren Crispel during baseball games. So you always have to be prepared for what's thrown at you. And uh, you learn a lot at ESPN Radio and Forever Broadcasting. We'd love to teach you a few things and talk to you about that. So we hope to see you soon. Uh, from, from the bees to, the, to everything, I hope you guys are paying attention. This is, when we put this together, I didn't think it was going to be this good. Thank you guys very much, and we're going to go on to the next one. But I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> Coming up, we have our folks from Penn State Intercollegiate Athletics. They're, they're batting cleanup for us tonight. And knowing how hard that group works, um, I really appreciate, we really appreciate them taking the time to be here yet tonight. Um, it's a good group of people. So as you get settled, if you would introduce yourselves to everyone and tell them a little bit about what you do and where our students can fit in for you, if you would, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Caracapa. I'm an assistant director of athletic communications uh, for Penn State Athletics. Uh, a little about myself, I'm a Penn State grad, part of the Curley Center of class of 2008. Um, from there, I interned with Quinnipiac University in Connecticut, and then I was fortunate enough to have an internship at USA Hockey in Colorado Springs um, during the Vancouver Olympic year, which was really cool. I had a great chance to uh, meet some uh, NHL players and work with them, which was a pretty awesome experience. Uh, from there, I worked at Boston University as an SID for the women's hockey, women's lacrosse teams. And then when the uh, Pagulas, who you may have heard of recently buying the Bills uh, today, um, when they made the donation to start hockey here, a position opened up here to work with the hockey program. And I was uh, lucky enough again to be able to come back home, uh, come to Penn State and work with the men's hockey program here. Um, also work with women's lacrosse. Um, Ariel and I are two of 13 uh, full-time SIDs we have working with our 31 sports. Um, if you ever go to gopsports.com and uh, see one of the articles there, it's one of us wrote that. If you're ever watching a uh, live TV broadcast and behind the coach or player at the post-game interview, you see the awkward person in the background trying to shoot them away, that's usually one of us. Um, and we're just looking for people that have a great work ethic. I think um, going through my career, sometimes you wonder, you know, how did I get this job? How was I so lucky to get this job? And I think it's just your work ethic. Being able to, to go in and how people touched upon before and just putting forth that, that effort, everything you do, being able to do whatever is asked of you. Um, I think that's a great key to success. Uh, to have a great career is just being able to adapt um, like it's been touched on in the past and that's what we're looking for. We have um, students here tonight um, giving Paul Marbo and Ryan Hickey a shout out that I see. Uh, th those two back there, uh, they handle actually the day-to-day -day, uh, sports information duties for two of our sports. So um, they've come in and shown that they have a great work ethic and willing to learn and they're two of our best students that we have working for us in our program. So that's something that you guys can can work towards. So like I just said, we're looking for people just to come in and, and who have a passion for sports and a passion to learn and just to get better. And, you know, we, we love to have you guys. Hi, everybody. My name is Ariel Sargent. Um, I am an assistant director of athletic communications along with Matt Caracapa. Um, I'm 
probably the only non-Penn State grad in here. Um, I went to the Newhouse School at, at Syracuse University. And um, after I graduated there, I spent some time in their office. I was fortunate enough to work with the softball, women's volleyball, women's tennis. And I also spent some time as secondary for the men's basketball team. Um, after I left there, I came here to Penn State. Last year was my first year. Um, I grew up just down the road in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So it was a really phenomenal opportunity for me to be able to return home to Penn State and uh, be able to work for the athletic program that I grew up rooting for. Um, just kind of like Matt said, um, we are looking for highly motiva motivated students who have uh, really great work ethics. We have an internship opportunity that um, we're really looking for students who are willing to take on any task. I think um, one of the things that is important is to always go into any internship with the mindset that you know you're not above anything and uh, that there's there's no job that you're not not willing to take. So um, certainly we have all different kinds of experiences in athletic communications. Being an SID uh, kind of requires you to wear multiple hats. Some days you're writing, some days you're designing, laying out, some days you're doing all different kinds of things, whether it be social media or, or just traditional writing. So I think that if you embrace every day with an open mind that no job is, is a is above you, then you know you'll be good to go. So we're looking for those those students who are going to come in with a motivated attitude, a smile on their face, and the mindset that you know they're willing to take on any task. So we encourage you all to come come chat with us about athletic communications. Good evening. My name is Lauren Crispel. Uh, I am far and away the senior member of this group. I really thought Kara Capital was closer <laughs> to me in age, and then you said you're an 08 grad, and now I feel really old. <laughs> Uh, I grew up here in State College, so uh, the logo that sits above me means a great deal to me and my family, uh, and I think to all of you as well, obviously. I uh, graduated in the summer of 2000, and I took an internship with the athletic department two days later as a uh, marketing and promotions intern. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure I really knew a lot of what it entailed other than I get to work with our teams. And uh, you know, Ari and, and Matt have touched on it. Uh, I think I was opportunistic back then. I jumped in, and uh, I was asked to do a lot of things. Uh, we were a much smaller staff back then too so we were stretched pretty thin uh, and and we jumped right in promoting all at that time 29 teams and so in 2005 after working with a variety of teams uh, and serving as director of marketing for Olympic sports I was moved full-time to marketing manager for Penn State basketball which is where I am today uh, and so our job and, and you'll hear from Rob to my left who is also a College of Com grad um, my job today is to brand and sell and market the heck out of Penn State basketball. We've got a big building, we've got a lot of seats to fill, uh, we've got to be creative in how we do it. Um, we've got to work on ticket packages, we've got to work on in-game entertainment, giveaways, group benefits, uh, student tickets, obviously student packages. Uh, so you name it, we've got to have our hands on it when it comes to Penn State basketball. The neat part though about being at a place like Penn State is that my days are not limited to Penn State basketball. And, and Ari and Matt didn't talk about it either, but their days aren't confined to volleyball and hockey either. Uh, everybody works with a lot of sports. So right now, uh, we're in the fall sports season, so we're working directly with men's soccer, uh, women's golf, field hockey, and a number of other teams. So I think a lot of people make the mistake. You know, Mike Essie talked about myths in, in Com Radio. One of the myths, I think, of Penn State athletics is that we end up being in our silos working with our teams, and that's just not the case. Uh, we have to be ready at any time to be asked about Micah Hancock. You know, if somebody asks me about Micah, I've got to talk about Micah and be able to promote Micah. Or I have to talk about David Glenn on the hockey team. You know, we all have to be ready to, to talk about our department as a whole. Um, so we do have about 25 to anywhere from 25 to 50 interns when it comes to marketing and promotions. One of whom is here tonight. Heather worked for us last year uh, and did a great job. And, and a lot of what you he you've heard from other people, you know, Steve Bauer touched on it, uh, the Bees and, and Matt and Ari touched on it. Heather did a great job of being opportunistic and jumping right in with both feet and, and trying to get her hands on any job she could. And sometimes she was at the gates handing out giveaways. Uh, sometimes she was delivering scripts to people within the arena. Sometimes she was setting up contests on the court for halftime. Um, some of those jobs may seem meaningless, some may seem real big. They're all essential though when you look at a basketball game or a hockey game or a volleyball match or a football game. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of endless details that need to happen uh, and you guys can be a vital part of that. The other part of my job that um, is really, really fun is along the way I've picked up some broadcasting duties. Um, back in 07 I took over play-by-play uh, -play for baseball. and. Uh, 
I get to work with Mr. Tripp. I don't know where he ran off to, but Mr. Tripp's back there. Uh, Tripp and I have a good time in the spring calling baseball games. Occasionally do some play-by-play -play for basketball when football and basketball overlap, and Steve Jones is doing football. Uh, and I do the sideline reporting for uh, football as well on the Sports Network. And, and I'll say this. I, I want to give my little tidbit of advice um, right now, if that's all right. I won't take too long. But you know, Mike talked about how they were in Ireland two weeks ago. And I'm, I'm 36 years old. And Mike, you're what, 21? 21 years old. So there we are getting set up for the Croke Park Classic um, in Dublin with our staff. And I look over one section to our right, and there, there's Mike and Joe getting set up with Steve Krejcik. And I'll, I'll be honest, I was envious. And, and here's why. When I looked to my right, I said, that's 21-year-old 20, Lauren Crispel. And I never got that opportunity. You know, I graduated in marketing, and I've told a number of people, whether it's Mike Porman or Steve Sampson, if I could go back and have the opportunities that you guys have in front of you and the resources, the wealth of resources and mentors you have, I'd probably be a com radio guy. And I was really envious because I looked over and saw two 21-year-olds with the experience that you guys had. And, and I think at the tender age of 21, you're positioned so much better than your peers and you got an opportunity that a handful of people around the world will ever get. So you guys are really in one of the most advantageous spots you will ever be in. And I believe me when I say it goes very quickly. I'm part of the way into my career, and I look at what you guys have available to you right now. The Curley Center came three years too late for me. I keep saying that. Um, you guys are in such a great spot. So don't miss the opportunity to take advantage of everybody here. There, there are people in this room with whom I would consult immediately if I were to switch careers. I can, I can count off four or five people right now in this room that I think of as mentors um, that are all part of this college. So you guys are in a wonderful spot. Don't miss that opportunity. Um, my colleague to my left here, Rob, again, he's, a, he's an exhibit of somebody who was opportunistic. Matt talked about Paul Marbo. I, I'm gonna embarrass you again, Paulie. I've never met a young man who said less but did more with his actions and work ethic. And I've watched him for, it feels like 10 years, four or five years now. Uh, I can tell you right now, if somebody told me, hey, you're gonna work with Sport X and your SID is gonna be Paul Marbo, I'd be fired up, because we'd be getting a great one. And he's a great example of somebody who put his nose to the grindstone and does great work day after day. Another one of those is uh, the gentleman to my left, Rob Roselli. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, I'm Rob Barzelli, graduated from the Curley Center in 2013. Uh, my undergrad degree was in PR. Um, I think the most interesting thing about my story and the thing that I hope can be true of all your stories is along the way, every internship I had, I met someone who was from the College of Communications and worked with someone there. Um, after my freshman year, I did an internship with 97.5 The Fanatic in Philadelphia. And my main supervisor there was Mike Missinelli, a Penn State grad. Um, following my sophomore year, I did an internship with the Sixers. And a guy named Sean there, who was on their PR staff, was my supervisor. Penn State College of Com grad. When I did an internship here in the marketing department for football during my sophomore year, uh, my boss was Guido D'Elia, Penn State grad. Um, and this was true for everywhere I went, uh, even when I went to Aramark. Um, my boss, Aaron Noss, Penn State grad, in charge of PR there. Now my boss right here to my right, Penn State College of Com grad. Um, when I was a senior here at Penn State, I had the opportunity to work at the Super Bowl as a PR volunteer. And the reason that was made possible, a College of Com grad, Mike Signora, who now heads up PR for the NFL. Um, and has a lot going on right now, I imagine. Um, so I think that's the unique thing about my story and the thing I hope is true of all your stories is each stop along the way, you will probably meet a Penn Stater from the College of Com. And the thing you have to realize is that person is so willing to help you to talk about their experience. Um, and they genuinely care about what you end up doing in your career. Um, two people that you know I don't think I'd be on this side of the room without that are in this room, Mike Poorman and Bob Martin. Um, if you're wise enough, you will stay close with them. You'll bug them through emails like I did, all that kind of stuff. Um, those are two great guys that genuinely care about what you guys end up doing with your careers. And they want to hear from you, too. Um, they want to see what you're doing. They know that Penn Staters like to help each other out. Um, and I think you know their goal is for all of you to have a story like mine, where at each stop along the way, you met someone who was from the College of Com and helped you out in your career. 
Um, and I hope to do the same for anybody. So feel free to ask me any questions. Um, one I forgot to mention, after I graduated, um, I did an internship with the Colts. My boss there, a Penn Stater, um, who's a state college guy, Matt Conti. Um, so I think it's pretty remarkable, and I hope that it can be true of all your stories, that you'll have um, plenty of Penn State stories to tell throughout your career. Um, briefly about what I do, I think LC, Lauren Crispel, who's known as LC in our office, um, as he touched on, we do a little bit of everything. Uh, my job title is Marketing Communication Specialist, so that entails advertising, marketing, working with the media, ticket sales, that kind of stuff. Um, right now, the main sport I'm working with is soccer, which we've essentially rebranded as Penn State Football, which I hope some of you have used our hashtag. Um, and we've kind of rebranded ourselves, and we've been having some great student, tur student turnouts at our games. Um, so basically it boils down to we try to get people to our games and make sure they have a great experience while they're there. Um, and I'm learning from one of the best to my right here. So feel free to ask me any questions. Guys, I know there's a mix of you out there from freshmen to seniors. We could not have given the people that have been before you tonight a script and they could have done it any better. And honestly, it was a couple emails saying, hey, could you make it? Could you come? And I, nobody that we asked said no. They, they came back to, to give their time for you guys. So we're going to turn it back on you as we go upstairs. And, and I hope you were listening to what they said about taking the opportunities. We're going to go into round tables. There's going to be food. If you came with a friend, kick them to the curb. Go on your own and get to a couple different pay tables and see some different people while you're here. The people that presented before in the back of the room. They're, they're, there's just something special about the opportunity that exists here. I was here 25 years ago. This didn't exist. The passion of the people that they've talked about, whether it's Mike or Bob or Jamie or John Affleck, I can tell you because my office is right next door to Mike's, nothing puts him in a happier mood than to say, hey, this student just got a job. Hey, this student got back to me. So this is your chance to start doing some of that stuff. Even if you're a senior and you're going to be out the door and you don't have another internship, find somebody tonight that you don't know. Say hello. Get a card out of it. Make a connection. Because down the road, that's going to pay off. Because Penn Staters do help each other out. And we even like the Syracuse people when they come back. And they're ours. So it's really OK. Um, we could not have done this tonight without the museum folks. So, so Ken and Amy, thank you so much for opening the doors and letting us in. Our staff, Tammy Falls, who was a lady who met you out front. My interns who are doing some of the photos you'll see in the video. Uh, the video intern, Emily. Uh, she got the job yesterday, and I said, hey, what are you doing tomorrow night? So it's one of those cases where somebody jumped in and started doing what they're doing. So that's happening all the time and all around you. So hopefully you're going to take a chance to do that. Go out to the lobby. Go upstairs. There's food here. Hopefully you can stick around and start telling your story tonight. Thank you for coming. <laughs>